Hello my friends and welcome to another Red Gaming Tech video myself and Marta where we are going to go through the latest in the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. We are going to kick things off today with a little bit of good news, something rather cool as we have the new generation of USB having been announced. And I'm, I'm going to shock you here guys, shock you, this is actually called USB 4. I know. But what is interesting, at least to me, is that it's built upon the newly, and I do stress newly, Royalty 3 Thunderbolt protocol from Intel. And we're going to be seeing a doubling of the transfer speed from USB 3.2. So that's going to be 40 Gbps. We're going to be seeing multiple simultaneous data and display protocols being enabled. And we're also going to be seeing the USB Type-C spec. So... I did stress there that this is newly Royalty 3 Thunderbolt. Well, as you probably know, Thunderbolt has always been under the domain of Intel. And Thunderbolt 3 had 8 lanes of DisplayPoint 1.2 for dual 4K 60Hz displays, USB 3.1 controller, 4 nodes of PCIe 3.0, and up to 100 watts of charging from a single USB Type-C connector. However, Intel announced earlier this year that they were going to be allowing the industry to adopt new non-exclusive royalty-free license and basically they're looking to see adoption rates of Thunderbolt really increase. So that is why we are seeing it included in USB 4. Now I do have a bit of a statement here from Brad Saunders, USB Promoter Group Chairman. And he said, quote, the primary goal of USB is to deliver the best user experience combining data, display and power delivery over a user-friendly and robust cable and connector solution. The USB 4 solution specifically tailors bus operation to further enhance this experience by optimizing the blend of data and display over a single connection and enabling the further doubling of performance. Now, interestingly as well, Intel also did announce that we're going to be seeing Thunderbolt 3 incorporated directly onto future CPUs. So they are really, really pushing hard to get Thunderbolt out there. And the first processors that are going to have Thunderbolt 3 included are going to be the 10nm Ice Lake, which we're expecting to see this year. For those of you wondering, yes, USB 4 is going to be backwards compatible compatible, excuse me, with USB 3.2, 2.0, and of course Thunderbolt 3 as well. And considering how pretty much everything ever these days is powered by USB, and of course the best external hard drives, for instance, obviously use USB 3 for the best transfer speeds, and obviously USB 3 port as well, alongside that is really like the fastest you can get at the moment. The adoption of this and improving USB with the inclusion of Thunderbolt, it just, it just helps all of us really. And I do have a bit of a statement here from Jason Zilla, the GM Client Connectivity Division at Intel or member of, should I say, and he says, quote, releasing the Thunderbolt protocol specification is a significant milestone for making today's simplest and most versatile port available to everyone. This, in combination with the integration of Thunderbolt 3 into upcoming Intel processors, is a win-win for the industry and consumers. So yes, it's not nothing flashy, nothing exciting, but it is going to significantly improve the day-to-day -day of anyone who uses a PC for anything, really. Now again, we are going to be seeing mainstream adoption sometime in 2020, but still, it's nice to see, and it is nice to see such a huge improvement as well. And a good move from Intel, that again, they're really pushing to get this tech out there, and making it royalty free, royalty free, excuse me, is definitely one way to do that. So we're going to move to one from, from one piece of good news to the next, as we have some good news regarding memory prices. As we have a very interesting report from DRAM Exchange that has basically said that over the current quarter we have seen DRAM prices drop nearly 30%. And according to them, this is the quote sharpest decline in a single season since 2011. And this decrease is expected to continue until we see demand match with supply. And we are expected to see prices fall to 20 sorry to fall 25% this quarter so this is going to mean cheaper memory kits which is definitely nice and, and feels like a bit of, sort of karma coming around because i'm sure you guys remember how expensive memory got there for a while so if you've perhaps been holding off waiting for a good time to upgrade your system well dram is only going to get cheaper and cheaper as well DRAM Exchange also say that the big three of the DRAM industry are continuing to invest in production. 
and I do have a bit of a statement here from DRAM Exchanges Report, which of course will be linked in the description below this video. And it reads, quote, SK Hynix has recently announced it will invest 120, 120 trillion won, around 107 billion US dollars, to build four new wafer fabs as part of its strategy to improve its competitiveness. Micron, on the other hand, doubled down and commenced construction of an IC testing and packaging plant in Taiwan. At the same time, its subsidiary Micron Memory Taiwan in Huli Taishung is considering building a new 12-inch DRAM wafer fab which could finish construction as early as the end of next year and massively contribute to production in 2021. So we are not seeing any slowdown from Micron there, or SK Hynix, when it comes to slowing down memory production. Now, Samsung said that they they would be slowing down memory production in order to keep prices stable, but they have still been just rapidly decreasing. So we're just seeing a big change happening in the memory market here, but in the long run, it is good news for us as consumers. And I am just full of good news today, it seems, as we have yet more, as Microsoft have introduced a drastic performance performance fix, fix, excuse me, for the Spectre variant. Now, I myself, Paul, and pretty much every tech channel under the sun has spoken ad nauseum on the performance impact of most of the software-based fixes that we saw trying to fight against the Spectre security vulnerability, but now we have a control flow technique developed by Google and then adapted to the Windows kernel by Microsoft which are going to be drastically speeding up processes that rely on speculative execution without compromising on that all important security. And the end result of this performance update is showing, well, 25% improvement in application launch times, storage throughput has increased 1.5 times in disk speed benchmarks, and we're also seeing drastic improvements on Broadwell CPUs for networking. Now, they are currently only available inside the Windows Insider Preview builds version 18.272 and above, but we are going to be seeing this as a standard feature during the first half of this year, and if you wish to enable or disable it, it's going to be done via registry tweaks and the name of this is going to be Repline. I'm not sure of the pronunciation of that. And for those of you wondering on the nitty-gritty of exactly how this works, I'm going to put a link in the description below this video to a lengthy support document from Google. And I do mean lengthy, it goes on for quite a while, but it goes through in everything in a lot of detail. So if you'd like to get involved in the nitty-gritty, look no further than the description, my friends, because it is all there for your perusal. So we're going to move on now to something mysterious by the name of the RTX 2050. Now what we actually have seen here is that we have seen Dell list the RTX 2050 GPU option in the small print of the Dell G5 15 gaming laptop product pages. Now this was first spotted by Notebook Check. Now this did only appear in a small pop-up option box which actually concerned Thunderbolt connectivity. So, to be honest with you, I just think this is a typo. I think RTX 2050 equals no. It would not make sense from a pricing point of view at all, and would cause a lot of confusion, to be honest, with the 1660 tie. It would possibly be a thing for OEMs for binning and yields if perhaps they wanted to have a cheaper 2060 variant, but probably wouldn't be worth it to, in all honesty, and again would cause a lot of confusion. Even if it was only as a mobile GPU, it is still going to cause confusion. So in all honesty, I think this was just a typo by whoever did the product page for Dell, given that it was only on this very small segment, and it has now been replaced by 1660 Ti. So I think this was just a placeholder or a typo, maybe both, <laughs> and they put 2050 because they didn't know what the 1660 tile was going to be called at the time, and now it has been updated. So, are we going to see a RTX 2050? Short answer, probably not. So, we are going to finish things up today with a little something regarding Microsoft's Game Pass. Interestingly, we do kind of have two comments that kind of conflict with each other here. Now, the first is from Phil Spencer, who needs no introduction, really, but he did an interview with GeekWire, and he basically said that, unsurprisingly, as we have seen evidenced by Microsoft's strategy the last few years, they just want to 
sell games and services to as many players as possible. Like we have really seen them push this with Xbox Play Anywhere, with a you know obviously crossplay working with Nintendo for Fortnite, all of this other stuff. And there was the recent rumors, of course, that we we're going to be seeing Xbox Game Pass find its home on the Nintendo Switch. And during the interview with GeekWire, Phil said, "Quote: We want to bring Game Pass to any device that somebody wants to play on." Now, if you ask me, this lends a lot of credence to the rumors that we heard regarding the Nintendo Switch possibility for Xbox Game Pass. And um, some people are speculating, oh, maybe this means on PlayStation. I don't think that's going to happen, simply if only for the reason that Sony would never, ever let that happen. I mean, they won't even, they, did, they had to be able to fight, they fought people. If I, can, if I can get the words out, that would be good to apologize, it's been a long day. They fought people actively for ages on even letting them play with other people that weren't on PlayStation for Fortnite. Something that literally did not impact them at all, even slightly, because they weren't selling less consoles because of a free-to-play title, for God's sake. So, would we see that? No. Does this mean we're more likely to see it on the Switch? Absolutely. Given that Switch, Nintendo have shown that they are more than happy to work directly with Microsoft. Now, interestingly, the comment that goes against this is some comments from Brad Sams, the ex- ex- executive editor of Petri and Thurret, and he says that, quote-unquote, multiple sources have told him that Game Pass will not be coming to the Switch. So, take of that from what you will, that's just sources. Sources can be incorrect, they can be going off old information, they could just be going off incorrect information. People hear things wrong all the time, get wrong information, it happens. I'm more willing to believe Phil on this one, obviously, but... This is by no means a confirmation, they're just saying this is what they want, not what they're actually able to do, because obviously, for them to put Game Pass on PC, easy peasy, easy money, done, for free. But, Switch, obviously, they need Nintendo's permission. Sony, ha. So, I think we're fairly likely to see it on Switch. They, they have shown that they're more than willing to work together on crossplay and making that ad for Minecraft, which was just brilliant. I just, I love it. <laughs> so... I think this adds credence to that rumour personally, but you know, take from it what you will. Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the description below this video. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.